Alice in Chains' self-titled record, Alice in Chains, also known as the Dog Record, is the band's third full-length studio record, following Dirt and Facelift. The Dog Record was recorded at various points from April to August of 95 at Bad Animal Studio in Seattle and was released on November 7, 1995. In keeping consistent with the themes Alice in Chains often explores in their music, the Dog Record focuses on subject matters such as death, depression, drug use, and personal relationships. Alice in Chains has always been considered, rightfully so, one of the heaviest, arguably the heaviest, of all the big grunge bands. Much of their music is more metal than it is grunge or alternative, and in specific regards to the dog record, many view it as more of a metal record than a grunge record. Specifically due to the slower tempo of much of the music on the album, the record is sometimes even cited as being partially a doom and sludge metal record. As mentioned, the dog record was released in the fall of 95. A year earlier, in the summer of 94, Alice in Chains was scheduled to go on tour with Metallica, Suicidal Tendencies, Danzig, and Fight. After the release of Jar of Flies in early 94, Lane Staley went to rehab for his heroin addiction. Things seemed to be getting better, but by the summer of 94, when rehearsing for the upcoming tour with Metallica, Lane Staley began using again. This subsequently led to Alice in Chains pulling out of the tour and even going on hiatus. It was during this hiatus that Lane Staley joined Mad Season, while Jerry Cantrell worked on material he had initially planned to use for a solo record. Three of Alice in Chains' four members, Mike Inez, Sean Kinney, and Jerry Cantrell, came together in January of 95 to jam on the material Jerry Cantrell had been working on. Lane Staley reconnected with the band by the spring of that year, and shortly after, in April of 95, Alice in Chains entered Bad Animal Studios with producer Toby Wright. Despite being back in the studio together, all was unfortunately not well. Lane Staley was still using heroin at the time, and as a matter of fact, his addiction was quite severe. Lane Staley would often show up late for rehearsal and recording sessions. Sometimes, he wouldn't show up at all. Susan Silver, one of Alice in Chains' managers, recalls the following. It was a really painful session because it took so long. It was horrifying to see Lane in that condition. Yet, when he was cognizant, he was the sweetest, bright-eyed guy you'd ever want to meet. To be in a meeting with him and have him fall asleep in front of you was gut-wrenching. Despite his worsening condition, Lane Staley wrote the majority of the lyrics for the songs on the album. I just wrote down whatever was on my mind, so a lot of the lyrics are really loose. If you asked me to sing the lyrics to probably any one of them right now, I couldn't do it. I'm not sure what they are because they're still that fresh. This time, there's no huge deep meaning in any of the songs. It was just what was going on in my head right then. We had good times and we had bad times. We recorded a few months of being human. In 2018, Jerry Cantrell said the following about the record. There's a sadness to that record. It's the sound of a band falling apart. It was our last studio record with Lane. It's a beautiful record, but it's sad too. It's a little more exploratory, a little bit more meandering. It's not as crafted as the rest of our records were. Now, in terms of the name of the record, the record officially is a self-titled record, Alice in Chains, but informally, it's known as the Dog Record. Sometimes it's also referred to as Tripod, a reference to the fact that the dog on the cover of the album only has three legs. When Sean Kinney was a kid, a three-legged dog named Tripod had chased him around, and that served as the inspiration for the album cover. Frequent Alice in Chains collaborator Rocky Shank did a casting call for three-legged dogs and photographed one at a playground in Los Angeles, but ultimately, the band chose to go with an image of a three-legged dog they had gotten elsewhere. The back cover of the record featured an image of Frank Lentini, a man who had three legs. The record debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 charts and managed to stay on the chart for almost a year. It was on the chart for 46 weeks. To date, the record has sold more than 3 million copies worldwide. One of the common notes from music critics regarding the album is that the dog record showed a progression in Alice in Chains' music, Rolling Stone even calling the album a musical rebirth. The Dog Record is the first full-length record the band recorded with Mike Inez and the last they would record with Lane Staley. The album clocks in at 64 minutes and 48 seconds, featuring a total of 12 songs. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.